What up crew? Today we're gonna make the highly anticipated box for our friend Mo at Inventables. Let's check it out. Joe P. Kirchman here and today's t-shirt segment is brought to you by Capes of the Czech Republic because both Mo and I have relatives in that beer drinking country. But enough about capes, let's figure out how to think inside of the box. Or think how to make a box. I got these at an old charity shop or a thrift store and it's basically wood with a cork backing and a laminate on the front. So let me show you how I cut this out and made the patterns to fit together. We'll open up Easel, which is a free software by Inventables, and we'll go into the Box Maker app. Here you can design the size of box that you want to create. It's really nice because when you put in the Z thickness of your material, it will calculate the number of tabs. I wanted a top for this box, so it will calculate two grooves on the side pieces for the top to slide into. I also recommend adding dog bones to help the edges really clamp in tight together. I tried one without it before, and it didn't work as well. Then all you do is import it, and Carvey will lay the toolpath onto the workpiece. Now since I'm doing one large square at a time, I'm going to delete the other five squares, carve that one piece, and then go back and undo it and move on to the next square. Then I'll move and center the piece because the Carvey won't let you use the left hand corner because that's where the Z stop button is. I can then press simulate and see that it takes about nine or 10 minutes. Then I just have to secure the work piece onto the waste board. I made this waste board specifically for this project. You can check that out in the customized Mojo video. It's able to take a lot bigger work pieces because the clamps are a little bit further out on the perimeter. I secure it down and I actually put a little piece of material on top of the button because my Carvey wasn't accurate enough. I also put a piece of cardboard underneath my workpiece so that my router bit would not carve into my customized waste board. Then it's on to carving time where it's going to work its magic. I didn't add any tabs on this because the material is large enough anyways, but you can if you want to. It's not going to come out clean because there's no dust extractor on Carvey, but as my friend Chris would say, get hands dirty. Then I just go back into Carvey and undo the deleted five parts and pick the next one and start carving again. All you need to do is go back into easel and carve out as many pieces that you have. There was one thing, the two side pieces where the slot is carved that the top slides into has to be carved about halfway through the material thickness. Then it's on to assembly time. I wasn't sure if the glue was gonna stick to the laminate, so I decided to sand the edges to give the glue something to grip onto. I'm also using my Rockler brush and the Gorilla Goo that we got from WorkbenchCon. If you haven't heard of WorkbenchCon, it's basically a meet and greet for makers. That's where we all bonded. They host it in Atlanta and it's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. Next, I had to fit all these pieces together and it was kind of tricky because I was racing against the clock for the glue drying. And there were a lot of different parts to try and glue up and fit together. But after a couple of failed attempts and re-gluing of parts, once you get three glued together, then it's a lot easier for the other two. Or it'd be a lot easier if you had a couple extra pairs of hands, but Housemate Hugh was nowhere to be found. But we don't need no stinking Housemate Hugh, because we got the box together anyways. I also wanted to test fit the top to make sure that it was a nice snug fit when it went together, and so when I clamped everything, I would know that it was all square. To quote my favorite movie, He's a square, Benny. A square. I cinched a strap around it, which made it look like a Christmas gift, which I guess it kind of is, it's just the wrong season. And then took some clamps and made sure everything was nice and snug. Then I just let it dry for a couple hours and hope for the best. Later that night, I undid all the clamps, and happily the lid came off. And voila, we have a beautiful box. It turned out really well. Now all we have to do is fill it with the Marmite flavors of the United Kingdom's treats. 
I don't know why they eat this stuff. We're also gonna add a few sweet snacks. And the illegal Kinder Surprise, which for some reason is not allowed in the United States. I'm not sure if these are a gift or a prank, but either way, Mo was gonna find out. We're also gonna add a couple 3D printed doors because this has now become my calling card. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and go make a box and send it to somebody else. I'm checking out of here with a quote. 